Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we're going to start today moving on from abiotic and biotic factors to talking about biomes. So we're still talking about the idea of ecosystems and ecology, but we're looking at it big picture now. Uh, we're looking at something called biomes. So what exactly are biomes? All right, you're going to need your uh, fill in the blank note sheet here and uh, essentially the definition of a biome would be a large community of plants and animals that occupy a distinct region of the world. Um, there can be uh, many ecosystems within one single biome, but typically there are some similarities between those uh, between those ecosystems. It can be either a land or terrestrial biome. Could we also have uh, aquatic or um, water biomes? And those water or aquatic biomes could be either uh, freshwater or saltwater biomes. Um, you're not typically going to have a biome that for the most part, this, they don't typically contain both fresh and salt water, so oceans are kind of their own biome. So we have essentially five major biomes in the world, although there are a lot of different ways you can break down um, different biomes. And so there are kind of subsets of these five that we're going to talk about keeping in mind that biomes don't have borders that the same way that say a country has a border that's been established through treaties and all of that sort of thing. Um, biomes are have approximate borders to them and depending on what map you look at uh, those borders may be a little bit different or they may categorize the biomes a little bit differently. But Basically, there are desert biomes, and again, we can have different types of desert biomes, but uh, there are also forest biomes. There are definitely a few different types of forest biomes. Grassland biomes, again, can be broken down into some subcategories there. Tundra is another biome. We'll talk more about that in just a little bit. And then, of course, there are the aquatic biomes. And we've already talked about the fact that you can have both freshwater and, uh, and uh, saltwater aquatic biomes. So what exactly determines what biome something is or where a biome is or what its boundaries are? Well, there are a few things that go into it. And one is the climate. Right. What are the general weather patterns over time um, for, for that particular area? And so you look at a large area that has some similar uh, types of uh, climate and that can help to determine a biome. Uh, also, another thing that helps to determine biome uh, or where a biome is found is geography. Okay, um, where is it located? Uh, also, is it, you know, some biomes are primarily flatland. Some are more likely to be mountainous. Uh, also, what helps to determine a biome is the special adaptations of the vegetation. So you're going to have similar types of vegetation, similar types of plants that grow within a biome. Once you start getting into other types of plants, then you are going to have a different type of biome. You know, if you look at our little picture with the polar bear down in the bottom right hand corner of your of your uh, page, you know, you'll see a a palm tree and then you see an iceberg with with a polar bear. Um, these would not be found in the same biome. So this, this picture doesn't make a lot of sense. It would not be 
the items in this picture would not be found in one single biome in the world because you're not going to have the vegetation of a palm tree in the same area that you're going to have icebergs. Uh, so, and that kind of goes along with our, our last category of what helps to determine a biome. So, what kinds of animals are in that biome? Uh, what types of, uh, you know, adaptations have they made to their environment? Um, you're going to have similar animals that are doing similar types of things in a particular biome. So you're certainly not going to have a polar bear in a tropical biome, um, nor are you going to have a palm tree in a polar biome. Here's a map that just kind of shows you uh, one way that biomes can be designated. Again, you could look at a, a different map of the biomes of the world, and it will look a little bit differently. Um, they might have uh, split up the categories of biomes a little differently. So down here at the bottom of the screen, uh, we have a bunch of biomes listed. Now, a different map might list them a little bit differently, slightly different names, or categorize them a little bit differently. Um, even up in the map itself, the borders might look just a little bit different in a different map, but they're going to be very similar because these different areas of the world have certain climates and geography, animals and plants that live there. Um, you'll notice if we look over in this area over here, this would be in the area where uh, where New Hampshire is located, right? So this part that kind of sticks out here, that would be Nova Scotia. And he, along here we have Maine, New Hampshire, um, and Massachusetts and things of that sort. So this map would indicate we are probably in the Tega biome. We'll talk more about what a Tega biome is all about in just a bit. Let's start to take a look at some of these biomes. Now, you're going to set aside the fill-in-the-blank notes for right now, and you're going to uh, take out the pages of, of uh, paper that you should have that uh, have different pictures and things on them, and you're going to look at the first one, which is the Arctic biome, and you're going to fill in information down towards the bottom uh, of this uh, of the Arctic biome section. You might need to write a little bit small on some of these biomes. Some of them have more information than others. But one fact that you want to know and write down is that, of course, in the Arctic biome, it has a freezing climate almost all year long. Okay. There is very little soil present. Now, keep in mind, there's soil underneath all the ice and snow. But for the most part, it can't really, it's not really seen, it's not available for growth of plants and things like that. It also tends to be extremely windy. You generally have some very wide open areas um, without a lot of uh, mountains and trees to, to kind of slow the wind down. So it tends to be very, very windy in Arctic areas. The Arctic areas are also surrounded by oceans. And then some of the animals that would be found in, Arctic, in the Arctic biome uh, would be polar bears, um, caribou, seals. Certainly there are others, but these are some of the uh, more well-known animals in the Arctic biome. Go ahead and pause the video if you need to uh, write down some of this information. All right, our next biome, ladies and gentlemen, is called alpine tundra, or sometimes it's just called tundra. Um, but you can have tundra that is not mountainous. Alpine refers to mountains. Um, so you can have tundra that's not mountainous, but generally speaking, um, a lot of our tundra area in the world is in mountainous areas. So this particular biome is alpine tundra. 
there are not many trees. You can have some some shrubs, some shorter bushes and things, but uh, trees do not really grow in the alpine tundra area. So a lot of times, you, perhaps you've heard of the tree line in the mountains. Uh, the alpine tundra is generally found above the t above the tree line. Um, permafrost is present most of the year, which means that if you dig down far enough into the ground, uh, even during what might be considered summer in that area, you're going to get to a place where there is still frost in the ground. Whereas where we live uh, here in New Hampshire, uh, eventually the frost does disappear. Some years it feels like it takes a very long time, but uh, eventually our ground completely thaws. In the alpine tundra, it does not generally completely thaw at any point during the year. Tends to be pretty cold and pretty dry in this area. Again, it's generally found at the tops of mountains, and that's why the word alpine is included in there. And as I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of uh, shrubs, mosses, lichens. These are all plants. Well, lichens, technically not just a plant, but um, but these are small plants that do not grow large at all. Uh, so in this area, um, large plants are just not capable of survival. Let's take a look at our next biome. And that is coniferous forest, which is also known as the taiga biome. So sometimes you'll see it listed as coniferous forest. Uh, other times it will be listed as the taiga. So it tends to have a fairly cold, harsh climate. Now we're not talking as cold and harsh as the polar regions, but it is fairly cold. Um, there's a pretty short growing season, but it is long enough uh, to be able to have uh, some plants that can grow longer, uh, ex excuse me, grow taller than uh, in the tundra regions. There are a lot of evergreen trees, which are sometimes called coniferous trees, which is why this is sometimes called the coniferous forest biome. Uh, of course, evergreen trees or coniferous trees um, have needles instead of leaves. Uh, they often grow cones, which is where the word coniferous comes from. Biodiversity is low. In other words, there's not a wide variety of plants and animals, or at least not nearly as wide a variety as in some other biomes of the world. And part of this is because of the fairly harsh conditions. Um, there's not a lot of biodiversity in, tund in the tundra or, or uh, polar or Arctic areas either. Um, but uh, but still, in the coniferous forest, where you might think there would be a lot of various kinds of animals living in the forest, well, I mean, there are, but not as many as in other kinds of forests. These tend to be prone to wildfires, uh, partially because um, it doesn't get a great deal of moisture throughout the year. It does get some precipitation, but, but not a huge amount. And Typically, tr there are so many trees and they are so close together that it just is easy for wildfires to, uh, to spread quickly. Some of the types of animals that you would see would be uh, moose, um, red fox, bear. Uh, they all live together in this area. Um, talks about them coexisting. I, you know, we hear the word coexist. We think they all get along fabulously, but... That's not necessarily true. Uh, like most living things, they are in competition for food and water, shelter, and all of those sorts of things, as we talked about uh, in our last le in our last lessons. Um, there are some maps that will show New Hampshire or parts of New Hampshire as being in the taiga. Uh, I think we actually fit better into a different category of biome. And that category is the temperate deciduous forest. We'll get into that in our next video, ladies and gentlemen, and we'll talk about exactly what the temperate deciduous forest is all about.